Thank God for His mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's a beautiful song. I tell you, we are living in a sad time. But you know what we can say? It's a sad time, but it's also a time we can look up. We know Jesus is soon coming. Amen. How many is ready for Him coming tonight? Amen. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if He come right now. Praise the Lord. Well, if you have your Bibles, well, then let's turn to the book of 2 Timothy tonight. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I want to share something that the Lord laid on my heart. Brother Green called me or texted me on Monday morning and asked me what I minister for him tonight. I told him I'd be glad to. I started to ask the Lord. He laid this on my heart. So I hope, I hope someone gets strengthened by it tonight. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. If you have it, say amen. He said, Thou, therefore, my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit, commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. There, therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask for your divine anointing tonight. Father, Lord Jesus, just touch me, Lord, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Father, Lord, I may minister your word, that, Lord, it be a blessing to some, and they be lifted up tonight here and across the airways. Father, Lord Jesus, for your glory. And, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, and we ask all... In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen and Amen. I titled my message tonight, Being a Good Soldier. Amen. God needs some good soldiers. You know, as I look around, I've been thinking, and I, here we have lost a lot of good soldiers around here over the last few years. Amen. But I, got, I think God is wanting to raise up some new soldiers. Amen. And I think we need to be a part of that. See, the Bible says that a good soldier, in verse 3, this is a good metaphor because it is appropriate. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, it tells us there that Jesus is the captain of our salvation. So we should be, we are his soldiers in his army. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 13. He said, finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Verse, next verse says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I want to stop there. You see, a lot of people think when they come to Christ and they come to an altar and they get saved, that things has become easy. But that's when the battle starts. Amen? That's why he said here that we must put on the whole armor of God of God that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, when the devil's got you or you sitting still, he ain't trying to get you. But when you take on that soldier and you become a soldier in his army, get ready for a fight. Amen? And that's why it's important tonight that we put on this armor. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our, our fight is not among us tonight. The fight is not among individuals. We ought to come together and forget any disagreement, put disagreements behind us, and we need to come together as one in unity, in one accord, to fight this battle. As we look around tonight, we're talking about, we see this COVID has come upon us for the last almost two years now, and we lost a lot of good people. But I want to tell you, the church needs to band together. They need to pray one for another. And the Bible said if we pray one for another, we shall overcome. You see tonight, I know I'm getting a little bit away, but I'm going to go by what the Lord laid in my heart. We see tonight, and should have talking about this and or that and pray for them. Hey man, that's about part of being a soldier. When you look at a soldier, you, and you know, I, I watch a lot, I like soldier pictures. I like the old soldier pictures of me and mama, and staying at mama's house a lot. That's what I watch, soldiers and um, cowboys and Indians and preaching and all that. But you know what? They stick together. Amen? He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. 
It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the de evil day, and having done all to stand. You see, we must take a stand. The church needs to take a stand. You know, we talk about the years ago. God's the same today as He was a hundred years ago. It takes the same thing this morning to be saved as it does uh, tonight that it does a hundred years ago. What was sin a hundred years ago is still sin again today. Amen? We see that some churches has let down and some of the people in the pulpit has let down the message, but they ain't being good leaders. You got to preach on sin. Hey man, you got to call sin what sin is. And that be another message for another day. See, we are in a real fight tonight. but And we are having what we need to learn to stand still. There's five things I want to look at tonight pretty quickly. Five qualifications of a good soldier. And the first one is, tonight, I even lost my place. The first one in the army... In the, in the armed forces tonight, not everyone is fit to be a soldier because of some physical extremities. But so let's talk about the church tonight. Not everybody is fit to be in leadership. Not because God didn't say so, because they choose not to be. God don't call you to a service that He don't equip you to follow, to equip you to do. It's up to you and I to get there. That, why do you think the Bible says, Study to show thyself a prude, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We got to study God's word. Just like we talk about going in the army. I never went into the army. I've never been in the armed forces, but I respect all of them who has. They go through a thing called boot camp. They just don't take them. You don't sign in today and go to the battlefield tomorrow. You got to go through six or eight to ten to twelve weeks boot camp according to what you're doing and what you want to be in the service. They prepare you before they send you out to battle. God don't call the qualified. He qualifies them that he calls. And you can be as close tonight to God or as far away as you will. We see tonight in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12 and 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are also, we also are compassed about with so great a crowd of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run the race, patience, the race that is set before us. Who did he say lay aside the weight? It says, you and me lay aside the weight. God ain't going to come down here and take anything out of your hand. God ain't going to tell you to go places where you should not go. He'll lay it upon your heart that you shouldn't go there. But you make the choice. I want to read that again. It says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. We so do, do us so easily beset us and let us run the race. We need to run that race tonight. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter um, 16 verse 7. It says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on the, his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the, man, the Lord seeth no man, not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. We see here that when God spoke to Samuel, he said, take your horn and take the horn and the oil of the cruise. He said, go down to Jesse's house. And he said, Lord, why if I go there? He says, Saul will surely kill me. He said, well, you take, you take, one, you take the animal, go with you, then let me make it as a sacrifice. He said, I tell you what to say when you get there. See, God don't look at the exterior. God looks at the heart. You see, when we look at others tonight and we pass judgment upon them, we don't know what God knows. Amen? We don't see the inside. You don't know what the heart says. And that's what we've got to realize. See, that's what the army does. When you go into the army, they change the inward man. Same thing when you come to God's army. He changes the inward man. 
Amen? So God looks on the inward. David done a lot of things. David committed adultery. He stole a man's wife. He put him on the front line and be killed. Had a, had a baby with another while he was, she was still married. He done all of that. But we wouldn't want him in the pulpit tonight, would we? But what did God say about David? He said he was a man after my own heart. Why? Because God looked at the heart and the exterior. See, that's why I say tonight, we need to lift each other up. When you see soldiers out there, have you ever watched them and then watch these um, things where they say when a soldier falls, others gather around and fire to get him up to pour them to safety. Amen? And that's what you and I should be doing tonight is pulling each other and holding each other up. He says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, so, but God have chosen the foolish things of this world to confine the wise. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confine the things which are mighty. Verse 28. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. And things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Don't never think you can't do anything. If God's got a call on your life, if He's called you, He will make a way for it. He will equip you for service. But we got to put Him to work. We got to study and apply ourselves. See, God, we are the chosen of God tonight. John 15 and 16 says, Jesus said, He have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. God didn't choose, I didn't choose God. He chose me. Tell you something about me. When God called me to preach, I laughed. When I went to high school, they done book reports. I turned my book report in and I stayed out that day. And the teacher said, well, if you don't stand up and read it, I'm going to cut half the grade. I said, cut it. I wouldn't stand up. I couldn't stand up, Brother Green. But when God called me, he made a way. Amen. So he chose us. So tonight to me, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving him. I don't look at I've lost anything. I'm looking what I gained. This world has nothing out here for me. The church shouldn't be out here in the world. The church should stay the church. Second thing, we must be separated from entanglement. Second Timothy 2 and 4 said, not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. We need to lay aside everything. That keeps us from following him. The Bible says stay, stay from the very appearance of evil. Amen. We see people. You know what? I went to a church one night. I went to a church over in Lexington. And they called me and asked me to come preach. Boy, I've been studying for two or three weeks. Because he gave me a month in advance. So I've been studying two or three weeks. Had a good message. Had about 20 pages. It was a black church. So they told me to be ready to preach long. That night I preached about an hour and a half. And I was wore out when I got out of the pulpit. But when I got up to preach... I had to lay them notes aside. God took me something else. I ain't got to call back. Let's say it there. But the things I preached on, I preached on holiness. Living separated. I preached on alcohol, no drinking, no sipping. No sipping saints. I didn't know why I was preaching that. That is what God gave me. But I worked the food line. And then one Sunday after church, I saw one of the men there that was a leader in the church come by, case of beer in this hand, a case of beer in this hand. Still had his suit on, walked through the line of people. That's the wrong testimony. God's children shouldn't be doing that. Let's throw that in for free tonight. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Bible's Jesus said himself, Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness. 
we got to stay out of the entanglements of this world. We got to seek the things from above. Second Corinthians five and seven, six and seventeen, or five and seventeen. Excuse me. It says therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We got to listen. We can't. We got. We are new creation. If your desires is not changed, and your talk has not changed, and your walk has not changed, then you have not changed. That's not me judging. That's according to the word. You can't do the things of the world and call yourself saved. Hello? You can't go to the places of the world and call yourself saved. And do the things of the world. I don't mean we can't go and have fun. That ain't what I'm saying. You can be a Christian anywhere you go. Just because you're somewhere, you ain't got to take part in the things they were doing. Hey, man, when they come up and try to tell dirty jokes, I always say, well, I just turned my back and walked away. I didn't want to hear it. They said, well, it's time for him to leave. I said, yeah, you're right. I don't want to hear it. What we put in here eventually will get down here and come out here. Hey, man, that's why we need to put good things in. Third thing, we must be fully consecrated 2 Timothy 2 and 4 says that we may please him not please the world not please those on the outside to please him we must preach teach live walk talk sleep the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ like brother green said a few weeks ago he's going to stand on the word I'm going to stand on the Word. If I stand up here and just read the Word to you, and it comes from the Bible, you can't argue with it. Amen? The Scripture is, the Bible says, let God be true and every man be what? Amen? God's not changed. The people has changed. God's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Consecration is necessary. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says it like this. No man can serve two masters. Paul said a double-minded man is unstable in all things. He said no man can serve two masters for either he will take the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mamma. Sweet and bitter water don't come from the same fountain. You can't have Jesus in the world too. He's one or the other. Hey man, you got to hold on to him. And I'm going to tell you, if there's ever been a day that we need to be this good soldier, it's the day and hour we're living in. It's not up to the pastor to, to go out here into the hedges and the highways and compel them to come into the house. It's not up to the pastors to go out here and hold the widows in those hands. It's up to the people in the church. You say, well, no, brother. I ain't saying the pastor shouldn't do none of that. But it's up to you and I to help him. Hey Amen? Because you remember, <clears throat> when the disciples gave their way to study and preparing to preach and teach the gospel, the widows and the orphans begin to suffer. The people begin to murmur and complain. Jesus spoke to them and said, Go out and choose 12 men of honest report. And set them over the affairs of the widows and the orphans. That you still can preach. That you can still pray. Get your messages. It's up to you and I to hold each other up. Pray for each other. Pray for our pastor. Preachers is just like ordinary people. They ain't no saints. They go through the same thing you and I go through with. They have more battles than what you know. The enemy's trying to do everything they can to stop them. That's why we need to pray for them and keep them lifted up in prayer. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you, there's that word ye again, that ye do what? Present your bodies. God cho chose us. He called us. But it's up to you and I to present ourselves. 
God won't come where He's not wanted. God won't come where He's not welcome. God will only come when you open the door unto Him. He knock on it. He come up and knock. But it's up to you and I to open that door. And the Bible said if we open that door, He'd come in and sup with us and we can sup with Him. Present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Do what? Reasonable. God don't ask for something that you and I can't do. It's not out of reason to serve God, that want Him to offer us. Here's the verse I like, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. The church shouldn't look like the world. The church shouldn't dress like the world. Boy, y'all quiet on me tonight. The church shouldn't drink the things of the world. Hello? You take a pig out of the slop in the mud, clean him up, put a bow on him, let him go where he goes back to. If you ever get a real dose to God, you want, you want one of those things. God gave me the highest I could ever be tonight in Him. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Through Scripture. If you want to know what sin tonight, read the Bible. If you want to know where you're supposed to go tonight, read the Bible. You don't need men to tell you. That's why you got to read His Word tonight. And it says that you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want to know the will of God for your life? Read the Word. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. Where we stand at tonight? Are we one of the called and chosen? Fourth thing. We need me, we must persevere in the midst of persecution. A good soldier must not let discouragement stop him along the way. 1 John 3 and 13 says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. If the world likes you, you need to check yourself. Hello? The world likes you or loves you, you better check yourself. Because somehow they ain't getting nervous around you. The world needs to get nervous around a Christian. Hello? Hello? They need to see a difference. I remember coming up as a kid. I never got scared in church. But I guess that's because I was raised in Pentecost church all my life. I used to sit and think it was funny. Watch, the, watch them old women with their hair up on their head. Start getting out in the middle of the floor. Start dancing. Bobby pins start flying everywhere. I thought that was funny. Tell you what, the night I got the Holy Ghost, I saw wine. We was in the church one. We was in the church one week. And it's an old church. It had an old pot belly stove. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The pipe was real high. Brother Green couldn't walk under it. Though. He had to duck to get under. Boy, the Holy Ghost is in that place that night and come down. There was this woman about five, eight, five, nine. Boy, she was making loops under that power pole around that pot belly heater. Eyes closed, never looking, but she never hit that pipe. Every time she went by, she ducked. That's real, folks. That's the Holy Ghost. Hey, Amen. We must persevere. Jesus always commend, commended people to go. And that go was always forward. Never backwards. You ever looked and wonder why a breastplate don't have a back plate? 
No retreat. If God saves you, God can keep you if you want to be kept. God has prepared each of us for a battle, and we are facing it every day. Last thing I want to look at tonight, we must be self empty a self empty servant. Ephesians 6 and 11. Go back to that. It says, We must put on the whole armor of God. We must put that armor on. We need to be prepared. You know what? The Bible said, Take up his cross one time and follow me. Huh? No, he said, take up thy cross daily and follow me. How many of us sometimes gets up and forgets to pick up that cross? We don't need to do that. You know why? Because that cross sustains us. That cross holds our armor. We need to put on Jesus every morning before our feet hits the floor. And we need to keep you bone all day long. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Church, the devil is walking about as a rule online, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your joy, kill your spirit, and kill your soul, and destroy you in a lake of fire. And the church is letting him do it. God's children want to be the happiest children in the world. You can't never not have nothing to praise God for. If God wakes you up, praise Him. The first gift He gives you the breath. The next gift, he gives you two eyes to see, ears to hear, feet to walk, hands to move. They might hurt. I find out the older I get, the more I hurt. But praise God, I can still move. Find something to praise him for. We must put on the whole armor of God. First Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Be ye steadfast. The Bible said, When you've done all that you know to do, stand still. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. If you and God, Satan can't move you. He can try. But he came. How do I know? The Bible said we are his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. If God be for you, who can be against you? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Bible says, lay our treasures up in heaven where neither moth, rust, or no foreign objects corrupted or do away with it. Satan can't steal all our stuff out of heaven. If we don't allow him, he can't take nothing. I'm not, I'm not doubting Satan has power. But Satan don't have power over you. Unless you give it to him. We need to become good soldiers tonight. In this army. We need to start and maintain a prayer life, praying one for another. A soldier is a somebody that comes alongside and help. Soldiers is this patch all around the world. And they dare to maintain peace in the hell. Jesus is our captain. Are we his soldiers? Jesus knows right where you at tonight. I don't know where you at, but He does. Jesus sitting there. Jesus knows what you sitting there tonight. 
your brother or sister beside of you might not know what battle you're going through. I, I'll be... I ain't sad to say, I think everybody in here is fighting a battle. If you ain't tell me your secret. I fight a battle every day. Seven days a week. That battle ain't took me over yet. I got victory. I've read the back of the book. Jesus said, I have overcome. And so can you. Our captain's already overcome the battle. We still in the war. But there's coming a day, folks. It's going to be worth it all. I don't know if I'll go by the grave or go by the rapture. But either one, I'm going to praise Him. I want to be a good soldier in God's army. I don't want to be a half soldier. Because half soldiers don't make it. Only being a soldier makes it through. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The last two years, the fight has intensified. The devil thought he won when he got the churches to shut up not assembled herself together. God allowed that, I believe. You don't have to agree with me. The Bible said, except His Word go all the way around the world and be preached, He wouldn't come. A lot of Word has gone around since the churches closed the doors. But I think it's time the church opens the doors back. I think it's time for us to come back in his house. Sitting at home. I don't see how you can sit at home. Now if you ain't able to come, that's different. But if you're able to get up and go to Walmart, you ever get up and come to the house of God. If you're able to go sit down in the restaurant for 30 minutes to an hour and eat a meal, you're able to come to God's house and sit here for an hour or two hours for service. That's just an excuse. It's time we do away with excuses and get back to the get back to the payment with him. Amen. Let us stand tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity and privilege tonight. Lord, I hope this word has touched somebody and struck somebody's heart. Lord, Lord, let your word go forth and not return void. Lord, help us. Lord, a hunger and thirst more after righteous sake, after righteousness things. Lord, go out through these highways tonight, Father, through this word. And Lord, get a hold of the hearts and the minds of the people that used to come to this house. Lord, that's no longer coming. And Lord, grip that heart and that mind, Father, Lord Jesus, and bring conviction upon them. Lord, and bring them back into your house or get them in a house somewhere. Lord, because time is short. Eternity's long, Lord. Lord, I don't want to see none perish. Lord, you said that you come to seek and to save that which is lost. That none should perish, but all come to repentance. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you just give the Lord a praise? Thank the Lord for His touch upon us this evening. Amen. How many of you are glad that you're a soldier? Amen. I just got one little quick thing to tell you. When I was 22, and uh, the Lord, he doesn't mean the same way. I was an introvert and wasn't a people person. So God must have known what he was uh, doing. But there's none of us in this room. When I got called to preach at 22 and saved at 18, I had no idea what was in front of me. Only thing I wanted to do to serve was serve God and please God. And there's not a person in this room that's not had to go through some perseverance to get to where you're at today. The battles will come. The struggle will come. But God is good. Amen. I love you. Be in prayer for us the remainder of the week. And we'll see everybody on Sunday. And remember those that are sick and keep praying for each other. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. God bless you this evening. Amen.